All right. We've covered uh, random error earlier um, and how to quantify uh, random uncertainty. Now we'll handle systematic error and uncertainty. Systematic error is more difficult to deal with than uh, random error uh, because uh, <laughs> if, if we knew what it was, we could fix it, right? Uh, it suggests that something's off with the way that our, uh, um, our apparatus is working or the process that we're using that we're consistently getting uh, values that don't match um, uh, our um, the true value, but we don't know the true value, so sometimes we don't even know if there's systematic error, um, and so it can be really hard to evaluate. So it, it takes some uh, time and experience uh, to start to recognize systematic errors. So how do we, where, where, where do these systematic errors come from? Um, extraneous variables is the primary place. In other words, we're missing something that's happening, whether it's an, a variable in the process that's uh, that we're, we're ignoring, uh, or it's some variable um, uh, that we're, that's changing that we're not paying attention to, or that we don't think is important, but is actually important. Um, uh, so that's the, that's the big problem with systematic error. A faulty calibration curve, uh, as we'll see, um, faulty is sort of a bad word here. It's actually just a, just, uh, kind of irregularities in a calibration curve. Most instruments are not going to uh, be exactly dependable and not, aren't going to have the same uh, response at all times. And so our calibration curve has limitations uh, in, those in, in that sense. Um, so we have to uh, sort of use our best judgment. Um, uh, experience, judgment, and care are our best uh, weapons against systematic error and, and we uh, try to do deal with that systematic error as best we can. Um, if we're lacking in those things, maybe we need to do a different field. All right, so um, how do we identify extraneous variables? Well, it's really just about paying attention to what you're doing. So let's you know imagine that we were trying to figure out the, the boiling point of uh, water and we measured this over three different days and each day we consistently found um, these different values and we're trying to what, what you know the boiling point of water isn't changing um, and so you might have to just sort of dig into this um, in this case what's the extraneous variable it might be the air pressure right so maybe the weather has changed um, and air pressure has a significant effect on um, on the boiling point. Uh, and so if we are not paying attention to the air pressure, uh, then we get mysteries like this and we think, oh, you know, so each day there's some systematic error. You know, maybe I did uh, four tests on day three here um, and got to 11.6 every time, uh, but because I wasn't paying attention to air pressure, uh, I have a systematic error. Uh, every time I do that test. So uh, things like that where we just have to make sure that we're really being careful about why we might be getting consistently wrong values. Uh, if we can't get rid of systematic uncertainty, we want to quantify it. And so we have to think about uh, how to quantify that. We can do that in a couple of ways. One is to use published instrument uncertainties. Uh, and you can see an example of that uh, over here. This is actually from the, uh, the manual for our rotational viscometer, uh, or we can do a calibration. Um, now, a lot of instruments like that rotational viscometer uh, come pre-calibrated, uh, and it's not easy for that particular instrument to think about how we might even recalibrate it. So we're sort of depending upon the manufacturer here. Um, and so we have to look at those values. And if you look over here, it's going to tell us, oh, we've got a plus or five, uh, plus or minus five percent error here. And we're just going to have to count that as our systematic error. Like there might be some calibration errors. Uh, maybe the instrument uh, responds 
to air pressure or temperature in ways that it that it doesn't account for and so we just say 5% that's going to account for all of that systematic error.